If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community in any of your towns within the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand, willingly lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Welcome. For those of you that don't know me, I am Pat Adam, and I am the secretary here at Peace Lutheran Church. This is the second Wednesday of Lent. Our Lenten series is Redo, Renew, and Rejoice. We are looking back on the past year at what has happened, and we are rejoicing at how God has been at work through us and in our community. Today, our focus is on shelter, and with me is Duana Bremer. She is representing the Salvation Army. Welcome, and thank you for coming. Well, thank, thank you, you very much for inviting yeah. me. Um, actually, I was kind of excited about coming to do this all day today, so thank great, you. Great, great. Could you tell us a little bit about your job title there and your responsibilities? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm the social service director for Polk, Burnett, St. Croix, and Barron counties. And I supervise all the shelters in our area. Many of you I know are familiar with Grace Place. That's our largest facility with 64 beds. In Polk County, we have scattered sites. So we have three scattered sites and we're able to accommodate nine individuals. And in Burnett County, we have a little duplex. The one thing that I did want to bring up that people aren't aware of, um, one of the things that we do mm -hmm. is we have 48 scattered sites. Mm -hmm. wow. And those are mm -hmm. apartments that are scattered through all three of our counties. Mm -hmm. And they're for individuals that have mental health issues, mm -hmm. AODA issues. We provide weekly case management sure. to those individuals. Mm -hmm. And that is a very big part Sure. of our shelter mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to bring up today too, Polk County lost their large shelter about three or four years ago. And now we are in the process of purchasing a site on the barren Polk border and it will accommodate mm -hmm. homeless individuals, families, single individuals sure. that are from our community. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited to be moving forward with that project. Mm -hmm. That's really nice because I think we were involved with the Serenity Home in Balsam Lake um, as a church and um, I think when that was dissolved, um, you know, people were really unsure of what the coverage was, you know, for our area too. So um, are there a lot of homelessness, homeless families in our area? I mean, I see it on the news, um, you know, the cities and metropolitan areas, but I don't usually Think of it as Osceola, Little Osceola, Dresser, St. Croix Falls, and... Homelessness know. looks different here. Okay. And I call it the hidden homeless. Okay. Because we don't see people like in the cities mm -hmm. holding a sign that sure. says, I need shelter, mm -hmm. but they're hidden. Yeah. They're either what we call sofa surfing, going from one house to the next mm -hmm. until their welcomes wore out. Mm -hmm. Many of them are in campers. Mm. Many of them are literally camping, even in the winter, in mm -hmm. this area. Yeah. So there are homeless individuals. Mm -hmm. Just to mention one thing mm -hmm. in Polk County, we received over 129 calls for shelter. Wow. In Polk County, wow. with our scattered sites, we only were able to accommodate nine. Wow. What's been happening is individuals or if someone's homeless or 
police find them or you know a mm -hmm. sheriff's department find mm -hmm. them they mm -hmm. actually are bringing them to grace place in sure. new richmond which is in st Croix county yep. interestingly enough when polk county the serenity home mm -hmm. closed prior to that grace place never had a waiting list oh, we man. were able to accommodate mm -hmm. anyone that called as soon as we started getting sure. more people from mm -hmm. Polk County, which we wanted to serve because yep. there was no shelter sure. anymore, yep. um, then we had a waiting list. Wow. So there is a huge need in, in our community. In, in the area, yep. Yep, so one of the biggest um, challenges would be here, of course, would just be weather alone. I mean, that it's winter and, and they don't have homes. Um, but what else would be a big challenge then um, for we're, families? As, as far as our families, mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of families that come to us with mental health issues. Okay. Yep. Um, that's, to be honest with you, a mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. component. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing so many different circumstances. Sure. Yep. Um, I was talking to my staff mm -hmm. the other day and in years past we always used to have a few clients that just hit a couple bumps in the road mm -hmm. and we'd help them a little bit and sure. they'd be on their way mm -hmm. but now the clients are having greater and greater yep. barriers. Yep. Um, for example last Saturday I got a call from the Frederick police mm -hmm. and she said I've got a homeless woman in my car right now, mm -hmm. or she said in her yes. squad, she yes. said it's in my squad mm -hmm. right now, yeah. and she has nowhere to go, mm -hmm. and her boyfriend stole her shoes, oh. so she was barefoot. Oh my goodness. Now, yeah. think about this. In Frederick, mm -hmm. that's a long ways to get to Grace Place Shelter yes. Yes. in New Richmond, and secondly, there are no motels in Frederick, mm -hmm. so this officer ended up driving that particular individual to mm -hmm. Siren to yeah. put her in a motel sure. there. Mm -hmm. So. You know, geographically, yep. we have a lot of challenges yes. in our community mm -hmm. because we're small. Sure. How how long does a an indi individual get to stay in in a shelter like Grace Place? N our normal stay is anywhere from thirty to ninety days. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at a ninety day stay, and really ninety days goes mm -hmm. very very quickly mm -hmm. because they may have barriers that one they 're not working mm -hmm. they need to seek em employment two they may yeah. have traffic tickets, mm -hmm. traffic violations, <laughs> mm -hmm. they may need to find housing that might be close to where they were because they don 't have a car sure. but ninety yeah. days is usually our maximum mm -hmm. now since i 've been mm -hmm. saying that, yeah. some people stay for 45 days okay. and that's all the time they need. Okay. If you look at our average, mm -hmm. it's 45 days, mm -hmm. but that means we get someone in here that stays maybe two, two weeks sure. and they're ready to move on. Yeah. We also have people that stay longer than 90 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of our staff writes social security applications mm -hmm. and since I had mentioned mental health is such a barrier, we are writing a lot of mm -hmm. applications for folks that do have mental health and because mm -hmm. of that, they may end up staying a little bit yep. longer. Sure, to get the help they need. Yep. Yes, right. What about meals and clothing for, for the people staying there? Well, Where does that we, come from? Oh yeah, we have mm -hmm. been very blessed with mm -hmm. many of the churches mm -hmm. have come in and brought a dinner meal mm -hmm. into the church, or in, excuse me, not yep. into the church, yep. into our shelter. Yep. Yep. But Churches come mm -hmm. in and bring a meal, and I have to say there are some of our churches that have done this for 17 years. So um, if we as a church wanted to bring some meals, where, where would we go about bringing the meals to? Okay, I do think the easiest thing would be to bring them to Grace Place located in New Richmond. Mm -hmm. And meals could be brought in frozen, and then they could be kept for another day when we need them. Or mm -hmm. you could sign up for a certain day mm -hmm. and bring it in during that day. The one thing about meals, and I have to say we're not doing this so much right now because of COVID, but it really made the residents feel the community cared about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when people bring meals in, they join the residents sure. for dinner. Oh, nice. And it's good for both. Mm -hmm. It's good for the residents because they mm -hmm. see people care. Yeah. And it's good for the community because mm -hmm. then we don't look at these yes. people that there are these creepy, icky people mm -hmm. and we don't want to be around them because that's just not the case. Absolutely. And when there are children staying there, do they attend the public school? 
Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And I should talk about that a little bit. Because of the McKinney-Vento Act, children mm -hmm. are able to say in the school they're going to when they became homeless. And an mm -hmm. example of that would be if a child became homeless in Osceola and the only shelter that was available would be Grace Place mm -hmm. in New Richmond, the New Richmond School District and the Osceola School District would have to work it out between them mm -hmm. how to transport that child to their school of origin. And mm -hmm. the reason is, is every time a kid changes schools, mm -hmm. they lose. And in addition to that, that's the only constant mm -hmm. thing that child has probably had in their life. Mm -hmm. So we work very closely with our homeless liaisons at the school and I have mm -hmm. to say in our community they are all wonderful. Mm -hmm. We love working with all of them and they care about the kids. Mm -hmm. We also have a huge tutoring program at Grace Place and what that is is three days a week all school age children are tutored. The tutors mm -hmm. have a release so that they can go on the parental websites mm -hmm. and check to see what homework the child has. Mm -hmm. They can contact the teachers and find out if they need remedial skills. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. It's just like when your child comes home mm -hmm. from school at home. Yeah. They come into the shelter. They go into the tutoring mm -hmm. room. They hang their coat up. They have a snack, <laughs> and then they start working with the tutors. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice. similar yes. to being at home. And the kids improve by about six months just wow. because someone has been able to guide them mm -hmm. with their homework. And I always want to stress, the parents mm -hmm. love their children. The parents mm -hmm. have probably struggled mightily in school, and school mm -hmm. is a fearful thing for them. And they're so worried about housing and keeping a job that that's not their priority. Right. So the kids really you know, love coming to tutoring. Mm -hmm. um, we've even worked with some of the high school kids who've been sure, in the shelter. That's very nice, and yeah. the mm -hmm. parents have, or the tutors sure. have helped them write reports, yeah. get access to the internet. Mm -hmm. We do have a computer lab, mm -hmm. so it's very easy for the kids mm -hmm. to access homework. Mm -hmm. um, now, our tutoring has cut back a little bit now just mm -hmm. due to COVID. Sure. Mm -hmm. And as we know, COVID has been some challenging times. It has. And are the parents are the parents mentored at all? I mean, do they get some training in, in learning how to, you know, live in a home and pay rent? Yeah, that's another good mm -hmm. thing to bring up. We also have parent education. Mm -hmm. We offer one course that's offered by the UW Extension called mm -hmm. Rent Smart. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to be a good renter mm -hmm. and what your responsibilities nice. would be as a renter. Mm -hmm. We also have budget education. Um, we talk about cooking, how to cook on a budget. Mm -hmm. That in this day and age, yeah. <laughs> doesn't everybody want to run through the McDonald's? Mm -hmm. But that's expensive. So maybe mm -hmm. once every couple of weeks you want to cook as a family. Sure. Because what's easier, yeah. cook as a family at home or try to keep a two-year-old yeah. entertained <laughs> at a restaurant? And yeah. we've all been yeah. there. Yes. So, yeah. um, so we do a lot yeah. of parent education. Mm -hmm. We do also work with youth groups that come in and they come up with children's activities that can be done with the kids while the parents are in their classes. Um, does your faith play a role in your profession, you know, even if it's on a personal level with that? You know, it, it absolutely does. And I can just tell a little story mm -hmm. about sure. when I was first hired. Mm -hmm. um, my husband had worked for the Salvation Army and obviously, Salvation Army is a Christian-based organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do believe in prayer. Right. And my husband said, you're really getting tired of driving into Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Why don't you apply for this job at sure. Grace Place? Mm -hmm. So I said, OK. I applied for this job. Mm -hmm. And you ladies might laugh, mm -hmm. but I went for the interview. I got out of the interview. Yeah. And I called my husband and I said, I am never working here. <laughs> never. <laughs> this, is not, this is not my job. And he called me in about an hour as I was in my office in Minneapolis. Oh, I, I had yeah. a marketing job yeah. at the time. Yeah. So he called me and he said, well, they just offered you the position. And I'm like, this is horrible. This is terrible. I do not want this job. Oh. So what I did was I thought I would trick my supervisor yeah. 
and call him and leave a voicemail on Saturday. Yeah. Very polite, thank you very much for your time, sure. but it's not my type mm -hmm. of thing. Sure enough, he answered the phone. <laughs> and his words to me Aww. were, pray about it over the weekend mm. and get back to me on Monday. Mm. And I did. I accepted the wow. position. And what I say to yeah. people, it has changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. I look at the clients that I work with, mm -hmm. how strong and how resilient wow. and many of the things that they've gone through, mm -hmm. I would never be able to do. Mm -hmm. So it's just changed the way I look at mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That that was definitely a God made decision. Yes. Oh, oh absolutely. for sure. Yes. It was right. And I should talk if we have a minute mm -hmm. to just mention mm -hmm. about this. Our new facility that is located right outside, right you know, right on the border of Polk and Barron, mm -hmm. um, we knew we had to do this. We could not find a site yeah. in Polk County mm -hmm. itself. And that's when I thought of the idea, mm -hmm. let's divide Let's just get on the border sure. and then both communities could yeah. support the program mm -hmm. and we could serve people in both sure. communities. This idea mm -hmm. came in to my head and mm -hmm. one of my coworkers and we talked about it. We had no idea mm -hmm. how we were gonna raise the money. We had no idea what property was mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I mean this was divine intervention <laughs> because we found the property, yeah. I saw something in the paper yeah. about a community development block grant that we could oh, apply wow. for mm -hmm. and receive the funds. Sure. We applied, we received those funds. Mm. Then another state grant came available mm -hmm. for operations. I applied for that, we received that. And then out of the That's clear great. blue, we had a donor donate $200,000. Oh my goodness. So this wow. is in God's hands, wow. I mean, he did the whole thing. We mm -hmm. did not think there yep. was one way we would have been able to figure out how to do it. And it's just like the yep. timing is right. Yeah. And maybe there was a reason mm -hmm. that we closed the facility. Sure. Yeah, it just into, took a in while. Balsam Lake. Mm -hmm. It just, mm -hmm. you know, my, you know how that is. Yeah. Our timetable yeah. isn't what God's <laughs> is. That's right. But we always want yes. God's to rush it up. Yes, we do. We always want him to rush it up. Right. What, what is the um, timeline for that when it will be actually open? You know, Probably new... within the next four months. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be going out to the community mm -hmm. and we're going to need a lot of volunteer mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. um, it's got two buildings on the property. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one of those buildings is pretty much a gut job. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It needs a lot of tender, sure. loving care. Yep. That sort of leads me into my next question was that, you know, it's hard for us to imagine um, families and, and kids without, without a home, let alone clothing or toys or whatever. Um, what is it that a church community, what is it that we can do to be helping you, you know, helping the Salvation Army? Oh, <laughs> good question. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I'm asking for is prayer. We need a lot of prayer mm -hmm. to work with our programs and help our clients. Mm -hmm. But the second thing that we can do that's more hands-on is we always need financial support. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, we are looking for individuals that can come in and help mentor mm -hmm. some of our clients. And we do have mentor yeah. training available. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for things Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say like socks and underwear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many homeless people don't mm -hmm. wear socks, sure. don't wear underwear mm -hmm. because they don't have any. Mm -hmm. That's something that yeah. we like. Yeah. Gently use sweatsuits mm -hmm. because sometimes if they do come in and all they've got are the clothes on their back, mm -hmm. we want to be able to say, take a shower. Yeah. Put this on. You know, <laughs> go ahead and wear this. And yes. then what we will do then is take them to a thrift store the next sure. day so they can get more mm -hmm. clothing. Mm -hmm. um, definitely meals. Mm -hmm. And meals do not need to be brought in on a set day. Mm -hmm. It could be that you wanted to make a couple pans of lasagna that mm -hmm. we could put in the freezer. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. and then we could serve at a yep. different day. So it mm -hmm. doesn't need to be like Wednesday is your night. Right. You know, maybe you want to bring it in for that week, but yep. you could bring it Monday, yep. frozen, and then we could just heat sure. it up. Thank yeah. you. So thank you very much for coming here. I, there was a lot that I've learned just in this few minutes about homelessness and about the Salvation Army. And I'm really happy to hear about, you know, the new one that's going to be popping up over there by Barron and Poconi border. So it's a really great organization. So well, thank I you very much for inviting me. I appreciate me. it very much. So let's close with a brief prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gracious God, thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Most of us have so very much. We especially give thanks today for Duana and all the workers with the Salvation Army with all that they're doing for housing in our area. In our hearts, we really want to help our friends and neighbors. Please guide us in making decisions to better serve our neighbors to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Mm -hmm.